Welcome to this brief tutorial on how you can analyze raw sequence data, in particular FASTQ files in AltAnalyze, using the Callisto algorithm produced by Lior Pachter's group. If you've already installed AltAnalyze, you'll simply select it. Here I'm on a Mac. I say begin analysis. I'm going to select RNA-seq, in this case mouse, continue, process RNA-seq reads. I'm going to give this data set a name, a very generic name. I'm going to select the results folder that I'm going to both, that both contains my FASTQ files and also that I'm going to write the results directly to. These are paired end FASTQ files. I'm going to select continue. You can change a number of these parameters. In previous tutorials, we've outlined what some, of, what some of these parameters mean. Again, you have more parameters. In this case, this is for pathway analysis. For example, we can say, let's just look at pathways and view those pathways too as wiki pathways, colored wiki pathways. At this point, I can either designate what these samples are. In this, this, these happen to actually be single cell RNA-seq samples. So let's just assume I don't know what these are. I don't know which ones are uh, particular cell types or disease samples. Uh, so I'm just going to say run de novo cluster prediction. The analysis works very similar if I were, for example, to say disease, disease, normal, and normal, uh, and then select my comparison groups. But instead, I'm just going to let the program identify these subgroups for me. Uh, these parameters are probably a bit too stringent. I usually lower these. So I'm going to make this 4. I'll make this a TPM. or this, In this case, Callisto is going to be generate TPMs instead of RPKMs. Set this to 0 because it's not going to use read counts as a cutoff, only if you were analyzing BAM files or BED files that you've previously generated. I'm going to set my correlation to uh, 0.4, and since I only have four samples, I'll look for any variance between two samples. I'm also going to choose to run HOPAC as my clustering algorithm, as this produces typically better results. And I think cell cycle effects uh, are probably non-ideal here, so I'm going to select to conservative elimination of those effects. And this is going to perform an unsupervised analysis, but first, if I hit Run Analysis, it's going to run Callisto. And so what is the software doing at this point? You'll notice in the background here in that folder, it created a folder called Expression Input. Inside Expression Input, there's another folder named Callisto. That Callisto folder for each one of these samples uh, results are being pseudo-aligned to the genome, or actually not to the genome, but to the transcriptome. Where did that transcriptome come from? Well, AltAnalyze will download that transcriptome file, in particular a FASTA sequence file for all RNA transcripts that correspond to the version of Ensemble which AltAnalyze is using. AltAnalyze is an Ensemble-centric piece of software. That means that there are different versions of Ensemble that are supported, Ensemble databases, in this case Ensemble version 72 for mouse. So the software is going to go online, it's going to download that FASTA file, and it's actually going to index uh, that file uh, using Callisto to derive uh, KMERS, all possible KMERS from the transcriptome, in which it's going to use as its index for pseudo-alignment. In this case I've already uh, generated my index from Callisto. I did that simply by running, previously running AltAnalyze using the Callisto option on some FASTQ files. It will add about 10 minutes to this. As you can see, the first sample has already uh, not only had all of its reads uh, pseudo-aligned to the transcriptome, but there have been, uh, there's quantification for all the transcripts, all the mRNA transcripts. Uh, now the second file is running. Um, I'm going to let this go and skip ahead in a moment. Our analysis is now complete. You see this indicator window named predicted sample group saved. If we were to actually click OK, we're going to see a number of intriguing results that have been produced from this analysis. As you remember, Callisto was run on our FASTQ files. Expression values were generated at the transcript and gene level. And from those gene level files, groups of samples were identified. Uh, that have different expression SAM profiles. In addition to different expression profiles, and this is the results of this algorithm ICGS, or Iterative Clustering and Guide Gene Selection, 
You see different blocks of genes that are expressed with different patterns. These are the predominant patterns of expression that the software found. There are genes in red along the right side. These genes are called the guide genes. These are the genes that the software selected as being uh, most uh, uh, central to each expression cluster uh, that was identified during the initial, um, the initial filtering and expression clustering uh, steps of the software. Um, and these are used to bring in all other genes that you see here. These are the genes that they're correlated to. On the left here, you see predicted cell types from the software. These come from a module in AltAnalyze called GoElite. GoElite has gene sets stored for approximately 300 different mouse or human cell types or, or tissues. Um, these are enrichment uh, uh, p-values uh, uh, that are associated with the genes within this cluster as being found uh, associated with these different cell types. These are just predictions. If we close this, you'll actually see there are a number of other clusters produced, or heat maps produced. Uh, these are different iterations that the software has run through. This is the final iteration that it's produced. However, if you like, you can choose uh, another iteration in terms of the results to use for the sample clustering. In this case, I like this output. You can clearly see there are probably two distinct subgroups here. Group 1 over here, indicated by this green cluster. Group 2, indicated by this blue cluster, uh, where these genes are predominantly upregulated in this set, and these genes are predominantly downregulated in this set. So let's say we want to use this clustering uh, for, for now for differential expression analyses. So we just say use selected. Actually, first, we need to select clusters 4, or by default it uses cluster 1. And we say use selected, and it's now going to run a series of additional analyses using the parameters we set out at the, the beginning of this. At this point, the final analysis has been completed. You'll see analysis complete, gene expression summary exported to expression output. Expression output is a folder in the directory that we designated as our results folder here. And if you click OK, you'll get this little summary window. This summary window will display what are some of the QC um, plots that come out of this analysis. Uh, this is the distribution of expression values. These are the gene level TPMs principal component analyses, hierarchical clustering results, and these are cell type predictions. In this case, the software is su suggesting that these are uh, lymphatic cell types or macrophages. We can look at the other lineage profiler results too and see if they agree with those. There's actually an enrichment of bone marrow uh, predicted cells in this case, again with lymph node, but um, not necessarily with macrophages. Uh, high enrichment in spleen. There are also something called marker finder results. These are the genes that had the uh, best described expression restricted to either group 1 or group 2 in our analysis. If you close this and you close uh, that window, uh, you'll see that there are actually an abundant number of results that are produced in our results folder. Uh, the first that I should point out is the Callisto gene expression summaries results. If you open this in Excel, what you'll find is, it's a tab delimited text file, for all 29,000 mouse ensemble genes you have uh, TPM expression values. For some of these you have zero, for some of these you have low values, for some you have very high values. Anything above one is probably expressed. These are the distinct samples. You have this summary file. These are all in this folder expression input. The summary file indicates what the estimated pseudo-aligned count read numbers are uh, in each one of these samples, the total number of reads and the percentage of aligned reads. These are, this is single cell RNA-seq, so the alignment percentages tend to be lower. The gene expression levels are based on transcript expression levels that are produced through Callisto. And in this transcript file, we see that there are much more, many more than 29,000 genes. There's actually 85,000 uh, transcripts. And if there are, let's say, four transcripts per gene, for that individual sample, the TPMs for that, that gene, for all the transcripts, will be summed 
to arrive at a final gene expression value. There are a number of other result folders, uh, including our ICGS results, our clustering results that are, that are in that in PDF format and text file format. As an alternative for exploring these results on your own, going directory by directory and file by file, there's an accessory application called the Alt-Analyze Viewer. You can select this application from an Alt-Analyze program folder. It's a separate uh, icon. You can also start this program from Alt-Analyze itself. You say Begin Analysis, Continue from the main menu, and Interactive Results View. You'll get this separate application. You select Open Projects, select the folder which your results were saved to, in this case called Callisto, and you'll immediately get a summary of your gene expression results. Here we have 802 genes upregulated. These are protein coding genes and 62 non-coding RNA genes uh, from Ensemble that are, that are also upregulated. You also see uh, what the criterion was used to, uh, to look at these differential expression results. These are user-defined from the Alt-Analyze menu from the first steps in the analysis. Again, fold greater than 2, raw p less than 0.05. We used a raw p because these were uh, just n equals 2 for this preliminary analysis. If you click under here, in this, this uh, arrow under gene expression, you'll see all these additional result files you can look at. These include networks of differentially expressed genes. Genes in red are upregulated. Genes in blue are downregulated. The red arrows here indicate predicted transcriptional targets. Uh, this is based on ShipSeq data from uh, a GoElite database that's present. The gray arrows indicate interactions from various different databases. You can also look at differentially expressed genes on pathways. And so here these are colored pathways because we chose to uh, visualize uh, uh, enriched, differential, uh, pa enriched pathways with differentially expressed genes. Again, red is upregulated, blue is downregulated. And you can look at these different pathways. Uh, you can just click through them. In this case, there were only three pathways uh, that were significant in this analysis. The full pathway analysis results are under pathway analysis, enrichment gene sets, and um, here you can see the genes that are associated with the significant uh, terms. You actually have a number of different, uh, in this case this is um, predicted cell types, uh, those, the, the, those biomarkers that were used from the ICGS analysis. You can actually click on pruned results. This will give you um, the results not in a gene-centric way, but in a pathway-centric way, where the, uh, the statistics are supplied uh, along with the genes that they're, uh, were, were differentially expressed and associated with those enriched results. You can actually filter these results um, by selecting a, a gene or some other criterion. Or you can sort these tables based on a particular column. There are a number of other tables, um, including your gene expression results, which are probably the most interesting to look at. If you double click on the left on this link that says data set, um, it defaults the first file in the folder, you get your gene expression results that were um, uh, where, where these different tests were performed. You have a number of different annotations here, predicted microRNA binding sites, protein coding potential, uh, different categories such as uh, RNA splicing uh, uh, and transcription factors, wiki pathways, go terms, uh, your, um, your TPM expression values, averages, fold changes, uh, adjusted and non-adjusted p-values, uh, and ANOVA statistics. And, there are, and it, uh, the results are by default sorted by this ANOVA adjusted p-value. You can actually select these genes and view uh, the results in terms of a plot here. This gene was not expressed on average in group one. It was highly expressed in group two. Again, you can actually do some filtering here. You can filter again for blood, and we'll get all results, uh, all, all rows effectively that have any um, mention of blood in them. So that's a pretty nifty option there. You have PCA, not just PCA, but interactive PCA if you want it. You can view to include labels or not include labels, 2D or 3D. 
you can view the marker finder results as an interactive heat map. Um, if you click this open heat map in tree view option, this will open up the program tree view. And again, you can select individual genes and explore them. These happen to have ensemble gene IDs. If this was not desirable, you can actually convert these in other tools within Alt Analyze to gene symbols. We can even do pathway enrichment analyses on the heat map itself. There are other heat maps we can visualize here. If we go under heat maps, by default looks at these, uh, these predicted cell types that come, through this, uh, come out of this algorithm lineage profiler. And we can look at our ICGS cluster results. And that's a brief summary of uh, the Alt Analyze result viewer and how to analyze Callisto results from our, uh, derived from FASTQ files. Let us know if you have any questions or comments. Thank you.